Hey everybody, today we're going to take a quick tour of my personal process for creating HUD elements in React game projects. We're going to be creating graphics in a pixel art program, converting those graphics into SVGs, and then dropping the SVGs into React components so we can control them with props and state. You can use this process for life bars, HUD elements, menu decorations, really anywhere you want to show like a stateful graphic in your React app. Now I'm saying React a lot here. Technically this will work for any front-end framework that you're using. You'll just have to kind of adjust some of the details based on whatever templating language you have going on. Today I'll be showing you how to do this in JSX, which is very standard for React. But if you're using something else, that's totally fine. Just adjust it to fit your needs. Before we get started here, just a quick reminder that I upload JavaScript and other game dev tutorials to this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please subscribe. So here's a really quick overview of what we're working with today. Uh, over here on the left, I've got a really basic create React app setup. This is just the default app.js file, and I've included a div here that we'll be working with. And on the right, I have the app running. This is a project that reuses an image that I created for my previous video, which I'll link to in the description below. Uh, really not much going on here, but what we're going to do is add a life bar to this scene. Here's the exact life bar that we're going to implement into our React app. Here I'm in my favorite pixel art program called A Sprite. I'll link to that in the description below. And um, I've got this thing designed and it's got just like a little bit of custom flair to it. See, it's got these pixel arty kind of corners and um, certain fills and stuff. We could recreate this probably in just HTML and CSS, but it might be just like a little bit too complicated to make that practical. Uh, and so instead, what I'd like to do is export these types of images as SVGs and then come in and layer in the stateful parts. So here we have uh, the life bar fill, this blue part. Uh, and then when it's, you know, the parts that aren't fill have this gray background to it. Uh, and so I'm going to walk you through exactly how I do that. So the first thing I want to do is create an empty state version of this comp. So what I'm going to do is just like copy everything in here. Uh, and make a new file the same size and then paste it in. And this one, I'm going to take out all of the fills. So now we're kind of left with just our empty shell. I'm going to export this image from the program as a PNG. And remember, it doesn't matter what program you use. This is just the one I like. Uh, but if I shift command S and save like, I don't know, life bar uh, example dot PNG. Now let's go find the file. So I'm going to minimize this for a second. Uh, here I have the copy of the file that I exported, lifebar example.png. And now I'm going to drop this image in one of my favorite tools ever. It's made by a developer named Stephen Shaw. Huge fan of his work. Dude's amazing. Uh, but what he has is this link that I'll link to in the description below. It's called Pixels to SVG. Uh, and it's a tool that you can drop in raster images and it will scan all the pixels and recreate an optimized SVG for you. Uh, so all I got to do is drag in my life bar example into this browser window. And you can see in the screen here, it's already created a SVG version and see that it's like super responsive and crisp and great. And it gives you the code right here. So we'll be using this code in our react app in just a second here. So here I am back in our react app. What we're going to do now is add a new component. That's going to be our life bar SVG and then fill it with those paths that we got from uh, pixels to SVG tool. So, uh, at the top here, I'm going to say import life bar from a new file called life bar. That doesn't exist yet. So we're going to go into our project and say new file life bar.js. And in here, this is just going to be like a basic um, React component. So uh, we'll import React from React. And then, you know, we'll export a default function that's going to return some JSX. And here is where we're going to come into our uh, browser tab that had the tool running, grab these SVG paths and just paste them into the return statement. I'm going to clean up these paths real quick. So to walk through what's going on here real quick, uh, basically when this React component renders, it's going to render out an SVG and the tool has pre-filled a lot of things for us based on the image that we dropped in, like the view box size. Uh, it's got some metadata with credit to the tool, which is great. Uh, and then this particular asset used four different colors. See if I zoom in here, see we get the uh, black kind of outline color, this white inner outline, uh, black again to, to kind of outline that rectangle on the inside. And then we have an inset shadow here. It's like a dark gray and then a slightly lighter gray is the background of the whole thing. So four colors total. Uh, and you see that when the tool ran, it created four different paths for us. Uh, each one, you know, for one for each color. So here we have the 
black outline. You can see all the detail that it outlined here. It's nice. I don't know what any of this stuff means. It's just math. Uh, and so the tool made that for us. We don't have to worry about writing it or getting all that right. And we have the same thing for white and then the inner fills here. So let's get this thing on the screen. Uh, we have defined our life bar over here in app.js. We're importing it, but we're not actually using it yet. So in this inner container here, I'm just going to paste in life bar uh, as a React component, give us some space because we'll later be passing some props into it. And now when the screen refreshes, you can see it's up here and abnormally large uh, because it doesn't have any instructions on sizing. Uh, but look how crisp it looks. That's great. That's what we want. Big reason we reached for SVG in the first place. Uh, and so if I come back in here to VS Code, let's control the size a little bit. So in lifebar.js, the SVG has been created, but it doesn't have a width instruction. It only has a view box, which uh, controls kind of the proportion of the whole thing. So let's lock some stuff down right here. I'm going to say width equals um, the width of the actual image, which is 44 pixels. It's designed at 44 pixels wide. So we can say 44. But that's going to make this tiny. See, when I hit save and reload, it's all the way down here at its natural one pixel size. So what we want to do is blow it up a little bit larger uh, to take each one of those pixels and multiply it by whatever pixel size the rest of our game is using right now. And so that happens to be 4. So if I just multiply this 44 by 4 in the width here and save, see that the um, image scales up as we want but it's still a little bit small for the video's purposes because I want to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and just bump this up to like eight. Actually, how about like 14? There we go. So remember how the original design had this blue fill? That's what we want to add in now to our SVG. So I'll come in here. I'm going to make a new rectangle tag, rect, which is something you can do in SVGs. And in here, uh, we're going to start with just kind of a goofy fill color. I'll use cyan just so it's like really bright and vivid. And we can see what's going on. And then we'll position it. So we'll say x is 3, um, y is 2. I'm just kind of like spitballing numbers here. Width, uh, this is going to be the width of, let's try to fill it up all the way. So how about like 38, I think? I'll show you how I got to these numbers in a second. Um, and then we'll close our tag come back over here and see that it's almost rendering, right? Here's the new <laughs> rectangle that we added, but you can see that uh, the alignment's a little bit weird. And it looks like the vertical part is weird. And that's because this view box actually starts at negative 0.5. So any Y value we use in here, we need to kind of offset by that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a dot five here. And then now our newly uh, shifted rectangle has is, you know, filling the life bar as a whole. And what I can do is play with this width value here. So if I say, like, instead of 38, uh, if I bump it down to, like, 20 or something, see that it's only going to fill up that much. And so we have, like, the basic workings of the part of our life bar that's going to fill up and down. So how did I get to 38? That's kind of weird. Well, um, the reason is, if, remember, our, our life bar was designed at 44 pixels wide. If I bring it back into a sprite, this whole area is 44 pixels wide this much, but just this inner part right here is 38. See, there's like a um, few, uh, you know, three on each side that aren't included. And so that's kind of how I got to that value. So we'll just bump it all the way back up to full. So now that we've got the basic layout right, let's uh, come in and start variableizing some of these numbers so they're not dealing with, you know, hard coded things all the time. So what I'll come up here and do is just capture that full width of the fill at 38. And then let's just mock out like a current, let's say, uh, just using easy numbers, say that this is like HP, right? And um, character has currently has 50 HP, but the max HP they can have is 100. That should be about 50%. And so what we want to do is take these 38 pixels that we're working with and then only fill in half of them based on the current and max math. So to do that, what I can do is a new variable about percent is going to be uh, you know, current divided by the max. So that'd be like 50 over 100. That should give us 0 0.5. Uh, and then from there, we'll get that pixel fill number, which is going to be how many of the 38 we fill in. Uh, and so to do that, we'll just say whatever the full width is, which is 38 for us right now, times the percent. So that'd be like half of it. And then sometimes you might get into a weird case where we get like weird fractions of pixels. And so what I like to do is just say math.floor and surround it in this so that we always get a nice rounded value. And so now that we have a pixel fill, 
down here, instead of passing in, you know, hard coded 38, we'll pass in the pixel fill. And when I save this, our life bar is only showing the percent that we currently have. All right, so we're almost done building out the design here, but if I look back at the comp, there's this really subtle extra path happening. Oops, so let me zoom in. You see that uh, this top part of the blue fill has a little bit of an inset shadow to it. So what we wanna do is make a different path for that so we can color it in correctly. So here we'll take this same path we have and uh, copy it, paste it. I'm gonna change the color to be goofy just so we can see what it looks like. So cyan and red, it's gonna look awesome. And then in here we'll have uh, pretty much the starting same X and Y values, but we only want the height to be one to only fill in this top pixel of the three height bar. And so when I save that and look back here, you see we have a, a red path up here and our cyan path is still uh, the main fill color. See, I told you it's gonna look beautiful. Um, and so now what I'll do is actually paste in the actual colors of our design. And so the, um, hex value for the nice blue color is here, and then the slightly darker one. Uh, I just pulled these values from the pixel art program. And now when I save, you see that our life bar looks a lot better. The last thing I'll do in this file is take our current and max, and instead of hard coding them right here in the render, of course that doesn't help us much, we wanna pass them in as props. So I'll say current and max up here, so that way the parent component can pass in current and max values, and I'll delete them from down here. And now our component will always use what's passed into it. And we currently aren't passing anything into it. So let's go back to app.js where we use the component. And then we can say current, look at VS Code even knows what the props are called. How cool is that? And uh, max is 100. So same thing we had before. So now we get the same results. Now you see that when I play with this 50 value here, if I like bump it up to 80, um, our fill is showing the right percentage. So that part's working great. But we don't always wanna be, again, hard coding these. We want this value to come from state of some sort. So let's go ahead and uh, right up here, importing React, we're gonna go ahead and uh, also import the use state hook, classic basic hook. Uh, so we'll say const, um, how about HP? And um, set HP from use state. We're gonna start with a value of, let's just start with 100. So we'll start full. And then what we want to do is pass in HP, which is coming from state, into the current of the bar. So now that's working. See that the bar is 100 out of 100. Maybe let's just add like a, a button. Um, uh, of course, the way this would change in a real game is like the player gets hit with a weapon or something like that, or, or finds health improvements, something like that. But uh, just to show that this is tied to state properly, we're just going to make an ouch button. Uh, and so when we when we click this, we're gonna, you know, decrease our HP. So if I say on click, um, get my syntax right here, on click, we're gonna use that set HP value and we're, what we're gonna do is set it to whatever HP is, but minus 10. And so now our ouch button appears here and I click it and see that the new value is successfully um, wired up to our life bar. All right, and there we have it. We've successfully designed some pixel art HUD elements uh, converted them to SVGs and used React State to populate the exact values. I hope you take this technique and use it to build out any kind of UI that you can dream of. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. And if you're working on a game in JavaScript or any other game dev language, uh, check out our Discord. We've got a Discord community of people that are making and playing indie games. So if you come and tell us about your project, we'd love to hear about it and see you there. All right, that's all for today. Thanks so much, everybody.